However, when the heart needs to rest a bit so as to catch its breath, then a big bird comes and spreads its wings above it, shielding it from the sun. Then the heart gets a little rest. But even then, while resting, it also looks facing the spring and still longs for it. But since it longs so much for the spring, why does it not go to the spring? Only as soon as the heart wants to go close to the mountain upon which the spring is, then it no longer sees the peak. It cannot look at the spring, and as soon as it would not look at the spring, it would expire, for the heart's entire vitality is only from the spring. So when it stands facing the mountain, then it sees the mountain peak where the spring is, but immediately, as soon as it wants to go to the mountain, the peak is no longer visible. For such indeed is the way with a tall mountain. Standing from afar, the peak is visible, but upon going nearer, the peak is no longer visible. Then it can no longer look at the spring, and could, heaven forbid, expire. And if this heart, heaven forbid, would expire, the whole world would be destroyed. For the heart is the very vitality of everything. And how can the world endure without the heart? Therefore, the heart cannot go to the spring. It only stands facing the spring, longing and screaming ceaselessly to be able to come to it, as mentioned. And the spring is completely timeless, for the spring is not within time at all. In other words, the spring has no time at all. That is because it is completely above worldly time. So how can the spring exist in the world? For in the world, nothing can exist without time. Only all the spring's time is simply the heart giving the spring a day as a gift. And when it comes time for the day to be let out already, and should the day go away, the spring would no longer have any time and would depart from the world. Then... When the spring is no longer, the heart itself would also expire. Heaven forbid. Then the whole world would become nil. Heaven forbid, as mentioned. Thus, when it gets right close to the end of the day, then they begin to take leave of each other, which is called Gazaganin. Wishes and blessings upon departing. The heart with the spring and begin to say wonderful riddles, poems, and songs one to another. Very fine riddles and songs with great love and tremendous yearning, one for the other, the heart for the spring, and the spring for the heart. Now, the truly benevolent man supervises and keeps watch over this, and when the day reaches its very end, and needs only to give out, at which very instant when the day lets out, and the spring shall no longer have it any day, as mentioned. It will pass away, and thus, heaven forbid, the heart will expire too. The whole world will be destroyed. At that moment, the truly benevolent man arrives and gives the heart a day. And the heart gives the day to the spring. Thus, the spring once again has time. In other words, that day, the spring can again maintain its existence, and consequently the heart too can maintain its existence. And when this day comes from the place from whence it comes, it comes along with riddles too, with fine poetry which contain all the wisdom. And there are distinctions between the day, for there is a Sunday, a Monday, etc., And similarly, there is a first of a month and holidays. In other words, according to what sort of day comes along with such poetry, it arrives. And all the time the truly benevolent man has is entirely through me. In other words, through the inarticulate one who is telling all this. For I go along and gather up all true kindness from which all the time comes to exist, as mentioned. And therefore the inarticulate is even cleverer and the sage who boasted 
that he is wise like any day one wishes. For time itself and its days come to exist entirely through him. The days coming along with poetry and riddles maintaining, containing all wisdoms as mentioned.